Today on Mike Attempts, 3D printer enclosure. I got my first 3D printer, but I don't want it sitting on my desk. An enclosure will reduce dust, help with temperature fluctuations, and provide a nice spot to keep my printer out of the way. I purchased three lac side tables from Ikea, but the undersides were brown. I taped off the corners where the legs attach and spray painted them to match the top. Different versions of this printed connector will be used to attach everything. This version is mostly just to match aesthetically with the rest. I remix most of my parts from designs I found for free on Thingiverse. Please see the description below for links to download all parts needed to make this enclosure. All modifications, combinations, and new part creation was done using Tinkercad. My first mistake was to assume the table legs would be perfectly perpendicular once the tables were assembled. Don't waste your time with glue. It'll just make life more difficult when you realize something is misaligned. You don't need it anyway. The structure is plenty sturdy without glue. Assembly is straightforward, but slightly frustrating. Once tight, be sure the outside edges of the legs are square with the outside edges of the tabletop. Then the first connector will just slide down the leg. I pre-drilled holes and drove in the number six wood screws. After repeating the process for the remaining legs, the first table was assembled. The top of this first table is actually gonna be the bottom. I printed these feet to provide better stability on the carpet. The construction of the tabletop looks like this, so it's only solid in the corners. I pre-drilled holes and attached the feet. I set the first table on top of the second tabletop and screwed the same type connectors to the tabletop only. Then I flipped the whole thing over. To make this connection much stronger, I'm going to use these thin trim head wood screws that will fit down inside the factory holes. It's just big enough to drive in the screws. I used a thin bit to drill through and mark holes on the ends of the legs. Then I lifted off the tabletop to finish drilling the pilot holes. Now the screws can be driven in. At this point, I realized the enclosure would be sitting too low to allow the right side door to open without hitting the couch arm. So I redesigned the feet and swapped them out. These little cones will be screwed down in the corners using the factory holes. They'll seat in the bottom of this version of the connector. The connectors will also be screwed to the ends of the legs using the factory holes. This will allow the whole top section of the enclosure to be lifted off. I used pan head wood screws with the same diameter as the original hardware. To connect the legs end to end, I designed these couplers. There's a wedge shaped ridge halfway up the inside to act as a stop. This is the third table. My enclosure will have a door on two of the four sides. This version of the connector has a cylinder that will act as a hinge. These four connectors will slide up the legs and sit like this. This will be the top. Here they are installed with four screws each. With all four couplers in place, I can drop in the third table. I pre-drilled all eight holes for each coupler and drove in the screws. Removing and replacing the top is as simple as this. The other part of the hinge snaps onto the cylinder. Now I just need some plexiglass. I purchased a 4x8 sheet, 3 millimeters thick, locally for $88 plus tax. All cuts were free and I kept the leftovers. I only needed four panels, but I had five cut just in case. 
I carefully marked out all of the cuts I needed to make and did the easy ones on the bandsaw. A hacksaw would also work great for the straight cuts. For these center cuts, I did three passes on one end so I could easily fit the coping saw blade. The blade that came with the saw made clean cuts, but I think a blade with finer teeth would have been easier to use. I cleaned up all the cuts with a file. I only needed to remove one connector to fit in all of the acrylic. I marked all mounting holes with a sharpie and drilled the plexiglass just a hair larger with a 1 8 inch bit. I secured the acrylic with M3 bolts and nuts, then peeled off the protective plastic. My Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro fits good, but I immediately realized I forgot to make cuts for the bed and power cables. Double check everything before peeling off the plastic. I'm glad I got that extra panel. To hold the doors closed, I bought these N35 magnets. Each disc is 3mm wide and 2mm tall. To keep the polarity straight, I grabbed two magnets and put a mark on the outermost flats. Then I stuck one magnet to a piece of tape with the marked flat facing out. I put a couple dabs of super glued gel inside the hole and then pressed in the magnet. The tape holds the magnet flush while the glue dries. I did the same for the top of the door. I repeated the process until there were two pairs of magnets for each door, and then removed the tape once the glue was dry. I designed and printed some handles, which line up nicely with the coupler. The plexiglass added a good bit of weight, so if I need to lift off the top, it's nice that the doors can be easily removed. The hinge design is plenty strong to support the acrylic, and reattaching the door is just as simple. To hold the print head ribbon cable parallel with the printer, I designed this pair of clips based on pieces from other designs I found online. Some other handy mods I printed from Thingiverse include bed locks, scraper holder, spool spacer, and a mount that shifts the display forward at a better angle. I also sprung for a UPS down below to prevent failed prints due to momentary power outages. This was a great project to introduce me to the world of 3D printing and design. Feel free to rate this video, add your comments and questions below, and subscribe for more.